Perth's wettest July in 25 years hasn't dampened via appetite, with Rewa.com revealing listings continue to drop in July. Nauru President Damien Collins said it is pleasing that stock is being soaked up quickly despite the wet weather Perth has been experiencing. Now, normally wet weather dampens people's interest in attending property inspections, but July was still a very strong month for sales. As we transition out of winter into spring, this should put the Perth property market in a good position to continue its strong recovery. Well, let's get into all the details with this month's Perth Market Update. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest and welcome to our Market Update video series where you can stay up to date with the markets that matter and find out what's happening in your local area. Now there were 8,374 listings for sale at the end of July on Rewa.com. Mr. Collins said much of this decline is being driven by houses with house listings down 6.2% over the month and 11.9% compared to three months ago. Now the suburbs to record the biggest decreases in listings in July were Banksia Grove down 44%, Lockridge down 37%, Darlington, Glendalo and Helena Valley all down 33%. Now Mr. Collins said, it is encouraging to see stock still being absorbed at a healthy pace during winter when we generally expect fewer sales to occur. Now CoreLogic's data shows the Perth Home Value Index lifted 0.3% in July and is up almost 11% over the last 12 months. Mr. Collins said, even though the rate of growth has slowed down, it is reassuring to see there has still been price growth, which will put Perth in a strong position as we enter the spring selling season. Now, Reba.com data, uh, Reba data shows the Perth median house sale price was just over $520,000 in July. And the suburbs to record the biggest increase in median house sale price during July was Spearwood up 3.3% to $485,000, Kingsley up 3.1% to $620,000, Leda up 2.9% to just over $300,000, Success up 2.8% uh, to $521,000, and Greenfields up 2.8% to $297,500. Now, Mr. Collins said it's pleasing to see representation from the more affordable end of the market in the top performing price growth suburbs. The Perth market recovery is widespread and occurring across all price points. Now, Reba.com data also shows the median time to sell a property was 17 days in July. Ms. Collins said even though the figure was one day slower than June, houses are still selling 27 days faster than they were a year ago. Now, the top 10 fastest selling suburbs in July were Kingsley, six days, Williton, seven days, Heathridge, eight days, uh, Kinross and Palmyra, also eight days, Waikiki, nine days, Greenwood, Leeming, Hocking, and North Perth, all 10 days. Now, Perth's median rent price was stable in July, holding at $425 a week. Mr. Collins said, although the Perth median rent price has increased over the last year, we are still $25 cheaper than the peak median rent price of $450 a week in 2013 and 14. Now, it's reassuring for tenants that the rate of growth has slowed since the end of the rental moratorium. Now, leasing activity increased 0.3% in July and is up 7.1% compared to April. Victoria Park saw the biggest increase in leased properties with activity up 71% in July compared to June. Other suburbs to perform well with Maylands up 63%, Piara Waters up 50%, Bowga also up 50%, Dianella up 40% and Southern River up 38%. Now, there were 2,734 properties for rent in Perth at the end of July, according to Rewa.com data. And Mr. Collins said listings for rent have increased 13% since the height of the rental shortage in December 2020. Although there is still a rental shortage, this is an encouraging trend that needs to continue to achieve a balanced market. Now, the five suburbs to record the biggest increase in rental listings during July were Bayswater, Mount Hawthorne, Halls Head, Ascot and Bassendine. Now, Ms. Collins said the increase in listings since January reinforces that investor confidence is slowly starting to return. This is also backed up by the Australian Bureau of Statistics data, which shows investor loan approvals uh, up in Western Australia, and they increased to almost half a billion dollars in May 2021, which is 10% more than April 21 and 209% more than May 2020. Ms. Collins said, we've still got some way to go before we get back to a balanced market, but the early signs are good. Well, guys, that is it from me today. Please remember to like, comment, and share this video. And if it's your first time tuning in, don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you are seeing this. Have a great week. And remember, guys, there is only one thing in life that makes a difference, and that's action. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.